wait a minute. I'm not going to let you off that easy. <laughs> but that's, that's guarding, guarding the, the good deposit that God has put in us through Vacation Bible School. Uh, a lot of great stuff. You know, uh, a long time before, um, you know, Google and, and uh, Facebook and all that stuff and, and the powers that be that from that seem to know more about ourselves than we know about ourselves or know about us than we know about ourselves. Uh, we were taught, at least I was taught, to not eavesdrop, not to uh, listen in on other people's conversations. But it's always been a temptation. I remember my Aunt Adeline uh, being on the phone, those old ones with the thing on the side, and, and it was a party line uh, out in the country here in South Dakota, and, and she'd be on there and she'd be trying to talk, and the more people that picked up, the weaker the voice got on the other end. And, and she was always so sweet, even to people eavesdropping. Could some of you please hang up so I can hear the person calling me? <laughs> uh, you know, we think of, of eavesdropping as bad, uh, but yet it's actually uh, not only tolerated, uh, but expected in our lesson for today in the text that we're going to be looking at. Uh, the outline that we have uh, for today, we're moving into uh, an, another segment on uh, the battle belongs to the Lord. Uh, and it has to do with guarding the good deposit of faith, uh, that, and, it's, and it's worth guarding. That's why you're here. You believe it's worth guarding. Uh, that's why you get up on a Sunday morning. That's why you bring your kids to Sunday school and the church and and that's why you go to Bible class and do your devotions and, and all those things is because you believe it's worth guarding. Uh, and, and someone's instilled that in you, and you know who that is. It's the, it's the power of the Spirit. Uh, before we get into this whole text here, I want to just talk briefly about the last verse, um, the last verse of this text. And it has to do with, um, the end goal of all of this by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us guard the good deposit entrusted to you and we can ask well what what for sure is that good deposit um, actually it's the word of God uh, God has poured into deposited in us and made an investment in us through his word and the Holy Spirit has used that deposit to create faith. We, it isn't because we went out looking for God and found Him because He was never lost. But He came looking for us and He found us through the power of the Spirit, through His Holy Word and created faith. So the first thing that we're going to see uh, as we eavesdrop into a very intimate letter between Paul, uh, the mentor, and, and Timothy, the mentee, uh, the one that he had brought up in the faith, if not only introduced him in the faith, but the first thing we see is that as we remember, okay, uh, how faith came to us, we're guarding our faith. And that's what he's telling Timothy here. Uh, just go to verse 1 through 5. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy and listen to this tender language, my beloved child, child in the faith, one he got to watch grow and be nourished. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day, as I remember your tears, must have been the tears of when they had to be separated that he's thinking of. I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. You see, when we remember those that brought us faith, God uses people in our lives 
like he did in Timothy. Who brought him to faith? Probably his mother and his grandmother. And it was probably the grandma. But then Paul got involved. Paul became a guard for his faith. When we think of how we came to faith, I would say and venture to say that most of us here um, came into this faith through very faithful parents or got grandparents that brought us to a place like this, if not this one, and, and to a font like this, where, where God, through the power of his word, connected with something as simple as water, deposited the Holy Spirit in us, and then everybody just walked away and left us alone, right? Right? No, those grandparents, those parents. And yes, we brought in godparents and parishioners and Sunday school teachers and VBS teachers and all those people that God continued to bring into our lives guarded that faith that was begun in baptism. There may be others here that have been brought into the faith through a friend, but it's always through people. God resides, His church resides in the hearts and minds of his people. And that's the only way he operates to get the word, that deposit, to someone else and to guard it. And it's God that's doing it through the power of the Spirit. If you get a chance sometime, I encourage you to take inventory. I did this uh, a while back and it was just such a, a blessed event where uh, I just went back as far as I could remember and before, even by who I was told was at my baptism and my godparent, and I just took inventory of all the people I could think of that God put into my life <laughs> to guard that deposit that was put into me, that helped me uh, to end up being here. It's, it's a great exercise. When you get home today, do that. That guards your faith because it connects you to what God is doing to get you where you are today and where he's still going to take you. Uh, I was reminded of that through our son Caleb who went through a couple of really tough things uh, this summer. And through that, uh, the Lord brought people into his life and it, he's changed. I watched, he had become very isolated, just kind of how he is. And then these things happen and, and through this, uh, God has brought some dear, faithful people into his life he never had. And he, they were in his life, but they weren't in his life in a, in a faithful way. But when he was having trouble, they ministered to him, and it woke up in him his faith. And, and it's a joy to watch how God will continue to bring guards into our life as we go along. The second point, if you're taking notes there, is that as we... Uh, fan uh, faith into flame through God's word, we're guarding that faith. You know, the question to Timothy is, what, what was he supposed to do with this faith now? And, and if you look at uh, verse 6, uh, it says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but a power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about the Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. There's a couple of things there I want you to note. First of all, uh, the faith comes to us through the laying on of hands. Uh, it's really hard to baptize a baby if you don't lay hands on them, even adults. There's laying on, on of hands. Uh, there, there's also what Paul talks about. And in a Acts chapter uh, 16, he had laid hands on a group of people that had been baptized into the faith, but they haven't received the outpouring of the Spirit that came on Pentecost. And he laid hands on them and prayed, and they received an outpouring of the Spirit. Fanning into flame is what he's encouraging Timothy to do and we've talked about that. 
many times in this sanctuary about how important it is to be in the Word of God. You know, I, I remember the uh, older Weber grills, that the kettle ones, you know, and I would get the coals just perfect, and then someone would call. And I'd have to go in, and I'd take the call, and I'd come back, and they'd be kind of white ash. And, and sometimes you could actually fan it into flame. You could, you could blow on it. You could get it hot again. I, I'm reminded of a pastor that went to visit a delinquent member that didn't, he told his wife, I, I don't have to go to faith, uh, or go to faith, go to church to, to have faith in God. And so he goes out to visit him, and the, the fireplace was going in the hearth, and, and they were sitting there, and the pastor and this fella did a little small talk. Then it got silent. The pastor just sat there. And he got up, and he went over, and he took the tongs there, and he pulled a coal out of the fire, and he set it out on the on the hearth and then he went and sat down and, and pretty soon he, they, they were looking and that coal just died and so he uh, the, the delinquent member gets up and he goes over and he takes the coal and puts it back in the fire and then he sits down and then he looked at the pastor and said I'll be there Sunday <laughs> You know, uh, to fan into flame, you know, means to be connected with the body of Christ. That's what we are as the church, the body of Christ. We're connected with the body of Christ through each other who house Christ and his word and encourage one another and pray for one another. We are uh, fanning into flame our faith when we're connected with the body of Christ through his written word as well. And so whenever we're here, whenever we are doing our devotions, whenever we gather for Bible study and prayer, and whenever we're in the Word ourselves and praying to our Father, we're guarding that deposit, that good deposit. And by the way, it's worth guarding. And if you ever want to really guard your faith, give it away. The Holy Spirit has a way of making that faith so strong when you share it with someone else. And that's, he's saying, don't be ashamed. This deposit is worth dying for. Don't be ashamed of me or this deposit that's in you. And so today, uh, I just want to hold up the insert that's, that's in the, the bulletin here today. Uh, we get these, and it really helps us stay connected to the persecuted church, but... Uh, this, this pastor in this church, he, he wanted to expand his house so that he could house the 130 or so people that had come to faith in the last year. And, uh, and, and the police came and at gunpoint tried to get him to stop and to give up his faith and denounce Jesus. Uh, when, I, when I look at that, I look at the strength of their faith their willingness to share the faith makes it stronger. It's the best way to guard faith is to share it with someone else. It is worth dying for. But the big question is why all this? And Paul gets right to it. This is the root of the matter. This is the heart of this lesson today. And he says, who, that is God, saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began and which now has been manifested through the appearing of the Savior Jesus Christ who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Uh, as we remember in whom we have our faith, we remember who it's all about and, and it's all for the sake of Jesus. It's for the sake of the fact that uh, he made it all about us. Everything Jesus ever did was for our sake. And, and because he's made us children, because he saved, even when we were born sinful, even when we were alienated from God, Jesus Christ came and lived that life, that perfect life. He fulfilled the law in every way, and yet 
then took our sin on himself and he died that horrific death so that we could live forever. Now, because we still face death all day long, we know that when we die, we're going to live. We got to experience that at another great funeral. And yes, funerals are great when we're Christians. You know, Luann's mom uh, went to be with the Lord. And yes, there are tears. And yes, there is a separation. But at the same time, uh, these flowers remind us there is a new life. There's a life that will never end. And that's what causes funerals for us to be celebrations. Today, as we look at this, the faith is guarded for an end. But even when we were separated from God, even when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And he brought life and immortality to light. And the last one uh, that shows that the battle really does belong to the Lord uh, is number four, as we share our faith with others, uh, we guard that faith. But it's still the Lord that's doing it. If you look at I want to zero in on verse 12. And it says there, um, which is why I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, for I know when I have believed whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he, our God, is able to guard until that day what he has entrusted to me, which he has made a deposit in me. There's a, there's a little detail in this next part of his letter. And he says, and this is a specific that we can do too, like Timothy, follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. I, uh, the pattern of sound words, you see, there is truth. And then there is, there's things that aren't truthful. There's lies. Uh, there's distortions. But the truth of God is really what Jesus is and what he's about. You see, the, the gospel is more uh, than just words. But it is still words. It was the word that was spoken back in the beginning that created everything who was Jesus because he was with God in the beginning and all things were made through him. It was the word that eventually became flesh and made his dwelling among us. It was the word that was written that we now have housed in the Bible and it's truth. And it's by this sound practice of the word of God that we give on to others now just like Eunice did. Just like your parents and grandparents did. Just like we have the privilege to do now. And we do that in so many ways uh, already here at Lord of Life and in our lives. But that work is never done until he takes us home. The word to us the word guarded in us, the word passed on to others. Kind of goes full circle, doesn't it? That's God at work guarding that precious deposit, and it's worth guarding. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we, as we consider that deposit of your word in us that has created faith, Help us to, uh, to remember where it came from. Uh, that you used other people. People like us. People we have come from. People that you have brought into our lives to, uh, to guard it. To give it to us and then guard it. Lord, we, we ask that you would help those uh, other people that you bring into our lives and your word to fan that into flame. May our hearts burn within us. In, in regard to being in your presence and knowing that you're there. And then, Lord, also help us to, um, to guard that faith as, as we, and that deposit as we pass it on to others. 
Lord, there are so many ways that that can be done. But we pray for the ways that you're doing it and, uh, in, our, in our Sunday school, in our Bible classes, in, our, in the proclaiming of the word here in this, this room, in our homes, in our small group studies, uh, in, the, in the ministry of for his uh, children across the world, in the, in the lives of people that, uh, that are persecuted and held at gunpoint. Um, in, in the branch that is preparing to reach out to people in a very intimate way uh, to help lives be discipled. Lord, we also want to just thank and praise you for the, uh, the ministries that take place uh, out of here through people in our community. Uh, help each of us, wherever you've placed us, in our vocations, uh, wherever we're at, uh, Lord, we also think of how you fan into flame the, uh, the faith of uh, kids, uh, our children, as well as uh, other children from other congregations in our schools, both the Lutheran uh, grade school and high school. As we prepare uh, to finish a building that's going to house that ministry, we just ask your blessing on it. Uh, there are so many ways, again, that we can, uh, that we can guard uh, through the power of your spirit because that's where it's at it's all about the power of your spirit working through your word in his name amen